Right, so what I want to do is just sort of review the equations that we've learned for constant acceleration. And in this video, what we're going to do is actually apply these equations to some real problems. So the three equations that you should have down by now are the following. First, um, and again, these are basic equations, and I should add that these relate to constant acceleration. And they work like this. So first, we have an equation for position, assuming that we have the time. And you'll see this equation written like this, x equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. And what I want to do is kind of contrast this contrast this with what we did with the buggy lab and the, and the constant velocity unit before. So first, um, this is still initial position. That still stays the same. What I want to kind of note here, though, is that this v naught um, before uh, in the first unit, this used to mean constant velocity, and now it means initial velocity. And just to go a little deep here, if you think about the buggy lab. Um, the graph of motion looks like this, and so it turns out that v naught, the initial velocity, stays the same for the whole motion. So naturally, um, for the buggy lab, we can call it v naught. Its initial velocity, but because it's constant, it stays v naught forever and ever and ever. Now, in this new unit, v naught means the velocity that you start with, and that's going to change over time. Okay. So again, this is just for the buggy lab. So this x here now, this actually means um, it can mean it means the position, and you will also sometimes see this written as um, x with the little f, meaning final position. So you need to get used to kind of seeing both of those. Both of those are totally valid ways of writing this equation. So what you might see here, actually I'll just kind of rewrite it like this. So I'll put the little final there. You might actually see a little final written there. Um, so whether it's with it or without it, the equation means the same thing. So that's our first equation. Now with that in mind, um, what I'm going to do is create a little space here, and get rid of this stuff, and we're going to write our second equation that we use. And the second equation that we use, again, in no particular order, um, is that our velocity is calculated by taking the acceleration times the time and adding to it the velocity that we started with. So once again, this is still initial position. And sometimes you'll see this written as final velocity. Okay, And what we're expecting you to be able to do is to rearrange. So in class, we also talked about, or we might have talked about, um, the idea that acceleration is change in velocity over time. Well, we're expecting you to have the mathematical wherewithal to be able to do something like this, where you're like, OK, v final equals at plus v naught. We can subtract v naught from both sides, and so this gives us v final minus v naught equals a t. And then, if you remember, v final anything final minus anything initial means delta. So delta v over time equals the acceleration when you divide both sides by time. So you're expected as people that are either um, seniors or people that have kind of taken harder science classes to know how to. Um, do this kind of algebraic manipulation. Okay. And then finally, our last equation is useful because what's happened is that we actually take time out of the picture. So this is a way of calculating things so we don't have time available. So this basically says we can get the final speed squared um, in the following way. So this you'll see this written in several ways. I want to show you one way like this. So this is one version of the equation, and once again, you may or may not see the final here. And I urge you to remember that this delta x is nothing more than your displacement, your x final minus x initial. So you will also see this equation written as 
So a second version of this equation is you will see v final squared equals v naught squared plus 2 times acceleration times x final minus x initial. So you're expected to be able to go between these two versions. So you should be able to be okay with this or this. And in the second version, you may or may not see that letter F there. So you're expected to be able to make those adjustments um, to your thinking. So um, that may seem mean or, oh, I don't remember or whatever. So what that means is you, you need to get these equations memorized and you need to get used to the idea that people may or may not put that F there. So you've just got to get used to that. It's something that happens all the time when we deal with equations. Okay? Um, I don't like it. It's not nice. People are mean. Um, again, um, physics isn't done by high school students. It's done by people that need to use equations quickly. And I'm training you. Honestly, I'm training for your college physics class or your next physics course. So um, you kind of get need, need to get used to this idea very soon. So just to kind of continue on this, let's kind of make sure that we've labeled all our variables properly. So if we label our variables, um, we know that x final um, is final position, x initial at, well, x naught is initial position. We have t is time. We have a is acceleration. We have v final is final velocity. We have v naught is initial velocity. And just to kind of review, remember delta x is displacement. That's x final minus x initial. And I want to also remind you that you, or may, you may or may not see this, F, this x final here. So you might sometimes see this written as x, and you might sometimes see this written as plain old v. So that's kind of our equations, and that's how they work. In the next part of this video, we're going to actually solve a couple of problems. All right, so I want to kind of talk about a basic approach to these problems, and um, this is kind of a five-step thing. You should definitely write this down in your notes, and I'm not going to dwell on it too long. Um, but I'm just going to say real quickly, you want to read the problem, label every single variable in the problem. Uh, you want to draw a picture. And when I say draw a picture, I don't mean like a pretty picture, like you're in art class. This isn't Mr. Parlanti's class. This is going to be a very cold, unfeeling engineering approach. Your diagram should be absolutely soulless. Um, you're simply labeling knowns and unknowns. That sounds kind of mean, but it's sort of true. If you're not sure what equation to pick, um, take every unknown, plug it into every equation, solve what you can solve for. Or every known, plug it into every equation, solve what you can solve for. Check to see if the solution works, and um, if you didn't get the right thing, go back and repeat the process. This is really how it works uh, with these problems. Um, so write that down. I'd pause the video, get this in your notes, because I'm going to refer to it constantly. Okay, I want you to copy it by hand, because uh, it kind of reinforces that learning. You're going to refer to it again and again. So this is exactly the kind of problem that I'm going to solve, and I'm just going to do an example right now, and now we're just going to do exactly what it says in these little approaches here. So we're going to read the problem and label every single variable, just as it says. So um, in any race car, velocity increases from 4 meters per second to 36 meters per second over a 4-second time interval. What's the acceleration? So um, looks like i got some letters to label here, so let's go ahead and do that. So this is my initial velocity, my final velocity, and that looks like it's the time. And we want to get the acceleration, A. That's an unknown. Now, I'm sure some of you could just go back here and say, uh, oh, yeah, if I go back a couple pages, um, I'm very clear on which equation I could use of these three, but I'm going to kind of overkill this problem. So it says draw a diagram of the problem labeling all knowns and unknowns. And I want to be very clear that when I say a diagram, I mean it's going to be very, very boring. Okay, I don't want you, like, drawing your soul. If you want to, great, but here's what I want to see. Um, so I go, I start from here. And I go here, um, I have some v naught of 4 meters per second. I have some v final that is going to be 36 meters per second. I guess I could draw a car, so here's my attempt at a car. Very bad, very boring. Um, I know that this seems to happen over a 4 second interval. I don't. Now notice something here. Um, if I were to label an initial position here, since they haven't really given me one, I would call it zero. And I'd call my final position, that would be unknown, just to put it in there. Okay, so I'm going to label every letter. And um, I don't know my acceleration. So, that's that. Now, the second thing they say to do, or rather the third thing, if you're not sure what equation to pick, we're going to take every single equation and write it down. So, here, let's just go ahead and do it. So, I'm going to say um, x final equals 1 half at squared plus v naught t plus x naught. Looks a little complicated. 
uh, v final squared equals v naught squared plus 2ax final minus x initial. And finally, we have our equation v final equals at plus v naught. Now, um, if you really were lost, you could plug every letter that you have into every single equation. But if you actually look here, we've got v naught, we've got v final, we've got time, and a is the only unknown. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of leap ahead and realize, hey, wait a minute, equation number three is the perfect candidate. I'm going to plug all the numbers in there and see what happens. So um, I'm going to have 36 is going to actually equal uh, my acceleration times the four seconds that they give me uh, right here, plus the four meters per second that I start with. So when I go ahead and actually solve that, I'm going to end up getting that my acceleration, when I do the math, is 8 meters per second squared. So if we didn't review that before, the unit of acceleration is meters per second squared, so please remember that and put it in problems. Now, what's nice about this is once I've solved a problem, that's a solution that I can use to solve other problems. And here's what I mean. If you look at problem number two, it's actually a parallel problem to number one. And what I mean by parallel is different numbers, but it's the same kind of problem. So I've got an initial speed and a final. Notice here, though, this is a bigger speed and this is a lesser speed I'm, because I'm slowing down okay, over three seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do exactly what I did in the previous problem. And in fact, because um, I have this first problem as a solution, I don't need to do every single one of these steps again if I know what I'm doing. Now, if I see you doing this in class and you keep making mistakes, of course I'll make you do it again and draw all these steps. But if you have an idea of what to do, I don't want to kind of make it too difficult for you. So here we go. We got V final equals V naught plus AT. Sorry, I kind of rewrote that a little bit differently from here to here. You're going to have to get used to that sort of thing. So I'm going to say 15 equals... Um, 36 plus a times 3. So 36 minus, so I'm going to get negative 21 equals a times 3. And so that gives me a equals negative 7 meters per second squared. So in this particular problem, it would appear that positive acceleration is speeding me up and negative acceleration is slowing me down. Okay. So... For number three, it says, how far did the car travel in problems one and two? So let's go ahead and, and solve this one. So I've got several equations I could use. So I know that x final, I don't know what it is, is one half. So we're just going to do this for the first problem, just get how far it travels. So x final equals one half times, I solve for the acceleration, just eight, uh, times the time squared, which is four squared, plus... Uh, do I have an initial speed? Yes, I do. It's 4 times 4 plus my initial position, oh, plus, plus my initial position, which I'm just going to say is 0, uh, which we have labeled in the picture. So I'm just copying numbers here. Um, and again, I'm using this first equation here and just labeling. So again, this is A, this is T, that's V naught, that's T. I go ahead and I plug in those numbers. And what I'll end up getting for the final is, um, so 4 times 4 times 4, that's 64. Um, plus 16, and that ends up being 80 meters um, as my final position. So I traveled a total of 80 meters. Now, um, for the second one, you actually do a very similar approach. I'm going to actually let you solve on your own, and that's going to be one of the things that you see in the Google Docs. So this is a very, very basic approach to problems. If you see something like this, it's really not going to be a... Um, Thing. I'm going to actually put two problems in your Google Docs that are not in this video, but you're going to be expected to solve them. And I'll leave a little space in your notes for you to do that. So you didn't see it in the Google Docs, but you're still expected to solve it as part of your homework. So you're expected to try to get the answer and solve it. And if you get it wrong, you're going to need to go back and do it again. So this is just a basic introduction to using equations. And um, hopefully it will help you get a better idea as you solve this um, in class.